Alrighty, what's going on everybody? Sorry, Zoom is giving me issues, so whatever. We'll we'll play this game with Zoom until it no longer plays. Alrighty, give me one sec, let's see. Uh, we were looking at price action on U30 today. Does this look like a distro you would have played? Um, yeah, if it was like lower time frame distro, probably not, but we'll, we'll take a look at it here. Hold on. Nope. Yeah, no, I wouldn't have played that. Yeah, no, no. I guess the the question is, where's your where's your break? You know, I mean, I see the I see that this is the the distro, right? Is that what you're going off of? But I mean, it's not even it's not even the slingshot, right? That breaks this low. So yeah, no, I I, I personally wouldn't have played it. Is that the new intro? Yeah, but you know what? I um, I don't know what's up with that intro. I don't know. I gotta screw around with it. I really wasn't prepared to stream it on Streamlabs. I was kind of hoping it was just gonna do with uh with Zoom, but Zoom's not letting me go live on YouTube. So I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's because I've got my third strike on YouTube. Who knows? We'll see. I'm gonna have to keep it clean today. You know, uh, I can't say the uh, the R U S S I A. Can you turn up the mic a bit? Really? All right. <clears throat> Is that better? Yeah. Um, hopefully that works. Alrighty. <clears throat> yeah. How's the uh, How's the audio now? Is it better? Alrighty. Yeah. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday. Absolutely. So let's uh, let's get into it. It is Tuesday. Uh, kind of you know you know like how I like to do things. Let's jump into the calendar real quick and. Clear these drawings. Alrighty. So for this week, there's really only two big events that I'm going to be looking at. Um, good enough. All right. I mean, I could pump it up some more, but on the uh, on the mixer, like I'm in the yellow. So let's see. Let's see if that's any better. Um, so anyway, the only the only real thing. Yeah. No. no I I think it's. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> I, like I said, I, I didn't have anything set up on my um, stream labs here to 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 actually stream on. So I kind of just threw it together real quick in like the last two minutes. Um, all right. No worries. No worries. We'll we'll make it work anyway. Fundamentally, there's only two things that I'm really going to be concerned with um, unless something pops in. The, the first is going to be the jobs reports, the NFP for the Canadian dollar on Friday. I'm kind of going to be looking to see if I could position myself into any kind of Canadian pair going into Friday. That way I'm, I'm pretty much set up for the weekend. And uh, Thursday, New York, just prior to New York session, is the Euros, um, essentially their FOMC. It's their monetary policy. They're going to be releasing their rate statement. And the key thing that I'm kind of looking at is that they're forecasting a zero change, not even a quarter basis point increase where you've got, you know, the Australian dollar, you've got the Swiss franc, you've got the, the Kiwi, you've got even the pound had pounded in December. I think the pound was the, the, the first one to really rate, uh, raise rates. But you've got everybody, even the dollar. I mean, Powell has come out and said that the U.S. dollar will see an increase in its interest rates, uh, a minimum of, I think it was like five times this year. So, and it's just kind of shocking that they haven't forecasted for the euro any kind of increase. So we'll see. Obviously, if there's if there is an increase, we're going to see some extreme volatility uh, in the euro. And if it's in the euro, we know that the dollar, which is diametrically opposed to the euro, is going to see some some volatility as well. So, you know, I told everybody in my group that my week's uh, bias is still going to be dollar bullish, right? Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking at, uh, I got into a US dollar Swiss franc buy this morning, but I'm looking at US Swiss franc buys, UCAD buys. Uh, I'm even looking at UJ buys. You, uh, one of the yen crosses that I am looking for buys on. And then of course I am like, I've been doing for the last couple of weeks. I am just selling the, the crap out of GU and EU. And I mean, they're, they're doing pretty well for me. So Ideally, that's 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 my bias. That's that's what I'm looking to target this week. And of course, indices, you know, listen, indices, I am continuing to just short. 
So, um, you know, this today I was looking for a short. It uh, US 30 was the closest for me to get into. It missed the 80% that I was looking at by uh, by a smidge. I mean, I say a smidge, but it was more like like 30 points. Um, but it was off a higher time frame bias. I realize I have a problem with getting into the market. For example, I missed the entire bear run on GU last month because I was waiting for the market to test areas of manipulation. Um, but they did. I mean, I I guess it all it all depends on how are, how are you are seeing your market cycle, right? Um, you know, for for a completed market cycle to uh, to happen, right? I mean, you, you need your distribution to your redistro all the way down into an accumulation that brings back into, and, and essentially that that bullish move back into the mitigation point is probably what you're waiting on. But if you know you're in a bearish market and you've already seen the distribution occur, why not play the continuation plays? You know, um, in my case, I just, I reduce my risk into it, but, you know, I, I still play the continuation plays. Um, I always get caught waiting for the test and the market never comes back to my test areas. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like I said, you, you've got to, you know, we 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 started looking at GU cells, I think last summer is when we started looking at GU cells when we came into the higher time frame extreme. And I mean, I, I'll give it to you this. I, I waited a little bit, too, because I was unsure of if the distribution at the top was, in fact, going to be the distribution that sends us down or if we were going to get one more leg. So but um, I mean, I would definitely if you've missed GU the entire time, my suggestion is this back test GU the last couple of months and see why what you missed and why you missed it and notate it, journal it, make sure you don't miss it again. Right. The market's very repetitive. I can't tell you how many times you'll see the same price action over and over and over again. You just need to make sure that you're you're there when it happens again. <clears throat> um, anticipating CAD CAD weakness off that news. Correct. What? No, I'm not. I'm not really anticipating CAD weakness. I'm just I'm anticipating the dollar is just going to overpower the CAD as oil. So just remember this as oil as oil appreciates, right? Yeah, so does the Canadian dollar, right? So does the Canadian dollar. So, but I, I just, US dollar is just gonna, I think US dollar is gonna be the overshadowing currency across the uh, across the entire market until, until we, I guess until we come back into some kind of normalcy. You know, uh, COVID is gone in case, in case, oh, well, shoot, you know what? This, this video is gonna get, get flagged. I didn't say the C word. I, I meant that Divock is gone, right? And uh, we now have other entanglements that is going on with the world. So until until we get some kind of normalcy back into the uh, into the market, we're, we're going to see the manipulation happen. We're going to see the dollar strength just come in. So, yeah. Uh, S&P had a beautiful distro, never mitigated. Uh, it did. It did. I mean, I'm... I'm I'm one of them. I'm still my limit order is still hanging, hanging on for dear life. So, but we'll we'll dive into it. Let's let's jump into the charts. Um, ideally, there's really nothing on here that is really going to surprise me much, um, except for the euro. Like I said, you know, everybody everybody should know that whatever happens to the euro is going to be diametrically opposed on the dollar index, right? Because the euro and the dollar are exact opposite of each other. If the euro becomes bullish, the dollar becomes bearish and vice versa. So I'm curious to see what happens. <clears throat> yeah, man, I gotta I gotta watch what to say. Otherwise they're gonna they're gonna suspend my YouTube account or something like that. And these these crummy bastards. All right, so let's jump in the charts here. What is going on here? Let's see, let's see. Uh, okay. All right. Sounds good. Uh, come on. Was anyone else's trading view down this afternoon? Like I was down for like three hours. I was actually on a zoom call with somebody in my, and, and their trading view went down too. I couldn't, it was stupid, man. <laughs> yeah. It worked all day. No, man, not mine, man. It sucked. Can I do full screen? Am I not on full screen? 
What am I on? Yeah, what am I on? The spot Spotify. Dude, everything. Every Discord was down. Yeah, yeah. It look it usually looks different. Um Yeah, no. Oh, you know what I'm doing though is I'm just sharing Chrome. That's what it is. I'm just sharing Chrome. Um it should be good though, man. I don't know. Is it is it just compressed? Is that what it is? Hold on. Yeah. It's not bad. Well, it is it is so just dude, yeah, cause cause Zoom wasn't letting me stream on YouTube. I, I've got to do it through Streamlabs and yeah, it's it's a mess. So I'm just gonna yeah, we'll 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 play it like this. No worries. Um, all right, so let's let's just go down the gauntlet here. Um, so some of the things that I was looking at, and this is kind of the thing, you know, what I kind of like back tested for the week for the weekend to prepare myself. Uh, first was AJ, right? Um, you know, I'm 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 continuing to look for bullishness on these a uh, the Australian and the Kiwi yen crosses, and I talked about it last week, right? So hold on, let me get over here. I talked about it last week. And when we look at what is going on with the Australian dollar, uh, let's do it like this. Perfect. Okay. So when we look at what's going on over here, we, we, we clearly had a distribution and that distribution sent down price out of that distribution. We know that we invalidated supply. All right. Um, I know a lot of people were looking because of this drop right here below a lot of people were thinking that we're bearish and we're going to sell out of here. And I would caution those people because I don't think you're going to get a sell out of that. Um, I honestly think because if you look at it from a market cycle perspective, we know that this was an accumulation with the terminal shakeout. We know that this was the slingshot that created our essentially our, you know, our new high, right? And then what did price do? Price came back to mitigate. And where did it mitigate, right? Well, it mitigates... It, it mitigates the last sell down, right? The little, the last sell to buy, like some people call the last institutional candle, whatever the heck you want to call it. But it essentially comes back to mitigate. But where I think people get, get it wrong is they're thinking that we're mitigating this, right? And that's not the case. That's not what we're mitigating, right? What we're mitigating is essentially this move right here, right? So when price engulfs it, it now needs to come back for a mitigation of some sort, and that's what we got, right? That's what we got. And if you measure out, <clears throat> if you measure out the entire move, right? Yeah, I mean, we come in to just pass the 80% of it. Um, and then from there, we're just seeing bullish bullish momentum, all right? Um, I'm, I'm continuing to look for buys. I looked for a buy this morning. It just didn't give it to me. So um, now all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking for a continuation move, right? Come on. You got dark mode now on the on the sides. That's why I got dark mode. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. It's just it's just because it's the time of day. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I'm looking at is I know that we have and just following the order flow of this, right? We can see that price has given us this, and essentially we have now by making a new high have done this, right? So we're in a bullish market with bullish order flow. And right now, what's maintaining my, my order flow is this low right here. So, you know, it's been it's been sitting there since the end of January. I'll continue to sit on it and wait for it to come back. But in the meantime, any signs of bullish momentum, I'm going to try and capitalize on. Right. So if I can capitalize on these, it's great. Um, you know, the key one that I'm going to be looking for is the most the most lowest time frame order flow that we have is right here. Right. This is what we're looking at. So I was actually looking for a buy this morning out of here. You could probably see the little bit of accumulation that we saw and then price coming back down. Um, ended up we ended up trading below it. So we've confirmed a distribution right now. And I'm not one bit. I'm, am I not looking for a sell out of this? What I'm looking for is just price to continue lower. And I'll be looking for this right here. This really nice type one accumulation. That was the start or the shakeout of this entire leg. So if price can get in there, um, ultimately it's what causes the reaccumulation. 
Uh, it is not what's maintaining the leg, but it is what, uh, in my opinion, like it's it's the first area, or at least the, the next area that I really want to attack a, a buy out of. So you know, if you just look at the math, you know we're about 200 pips or so away from it. So it's not something I'm going to be expecting tonight. How can we use this trading method as a day trading? What do you mean? How can he use it as a day trading? Yeah, I don't know. What do you mean by, yeah? How can you use, uh, no clue, man. <laughs> like day trading, like like you trade every day. Uh, I mean, I guess just find the setups that, that line up and play it. So um, am I, wait, were you waiting for a schematic in today's POI? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in this over here? Yeah, hold on. So when we came, yeah. Yeah, when we came when we came back into this right here, yeah, I was waiting for a schematic. So it it really never gave me anything here. What about eighty three five hundred? Eighty three five hundred. We'll look at that, bro. Hold on, let's see. Um, two, two, two. Now I wouldn't have looked for a. I'll tell you this: I wouldn't have looked for a schematic if we actually broke some some order flow with it. So like if 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 this would have sent up right, if we would have done that. Um, and invalidated the redistribution, then I, I would have had a limit order out of here. If, if 50 lined up, um, maybe 50 would have lined up nicely for like maybe six, seven pips and like the 80, I would have, I would have taken out of that. But the fact, the fact that we distributed here, um, and then kind of started walking this down. Yeah. I was, I was going to wait for the schematic there just where we were at. Um, yeah. So 83, 500 let's, what is 83, 500? 83,500. Oh, you mean out of this right here? Out of that? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll tell you this. Like, I, it's, it, it, if I see something clean in there, it, you know, the potential is there to take it. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm more concerned with us playing. Ooh, I'm more concerned with us playing down to this, though. That's what I'd really like. You know, this this reaccumulation here was the last reaccumulation that sent this up. You know, at this point though, we've we've broken order flow. You know, we're we're confirmed distribution. So I would need to see, and you can you can already see like the creek being formed, right? Well, like we've we've got that trend line going. Price comes down and gives an accumulation, you know, depending on the time that it comes in, I I'd, I'd give it risk. Um more importantly, if we confirm the break right so like we do something along the lines of coming down into coming down into this accumulate that accumulation leads to a, a boof then I'll, I'll be a player to walk this up like that after breaking jumping over that creek right i mean that's kind of how i'll play it um but just looking at the chart like where, where do i want to buy from like when you when you're looking at this right where do you want to buy from i, I want to buy from here this 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 makes me a buyer right we come into this you know i really i really don't want us to do anything in there if if that's only if that's the only thing it gives me then you know it is what it is so but on aj that's that's kind of what i'm looking at um you know i really i really want to see if i can take this a little higher with it Okay, uh, moving on. So I'm looking for AJ buys and might as well just get NJ out of the way. I'm looking for NJ buys as well, right? So same concept, like we jump over here to, we jump up here to the one hour and we can see what we got going on, right? We are, we are stuck between a leg, but we're in a bullish leg, right? So if I come over here to, let's go to the four hour. All right, so same thing like AJ, right? We know that we traded above this high. So we know that we're in this leg, right? And, you know, we come into smack dab 80% of our spring. Okay. So immediately I'm, a, I'm, I'm looking for buys, right? That's what I want to see. Um, so we'll move over here and we'll kind of take a, take a peek at what's going on. 
All right. So this entire move, right? This entire move, what has what it has done for us? Uh, bear with me. Here we go. What this entire move has done for us is we know that supply was here, right? And by taking this high, we now know that we are maintaining this leg, right? That's our leg. So where do I want to be a buyer from? All right. Um, essentially, this is the last push right in there. This is that last push, the last mitigation that comes in and then gives us that push. So that's where I want to be a buyer from. That's where I'm going to be looking to see what we do. If we come down to the 15, right, and we'll take a look at here off the 15. This is that area where we have a super clean accumulation, right? The same accumulation that we saw in AJ, it's present right there. Okay. Um, and just looking at what price has done, right? Reaccumulation, we have the shakeout, price breaks the high, we come back, we accumulate in the 80% of that shakeout, and then off to the races it goes. So same thing, that's where I want to really pay attention to and see if we can get into. Um, you know, on on NJ, if you look at the NJ chart, we really haven't broken order flow where AJ has. So this is kind of one of those where, you know, you've got to leverage both both pairs, Right, both pairs have, um, you know, they have a comparable strength that you have to use. We're in a bullish market, so if I've got a pair that's not showing any weakness, a pair that shows weakness, I either need the pair that was showing me weakness to give me some more strength, and back in I go, or I need to see us get a pullback. Right. So what gets me in from up here is we reaccumulate. Same thing on AJ. What gets me uh, what gets me into a trade up here? We reaccumulate. We get a reaccumulation with a defined shakeout. And if if you know if Santa's going to take my my Christmas list, it's going to be a type one schematic in that shakeout. Then you know that get, that makes me a player in the game. So that's that's ultimately what I'm going to be waiting on. Um, if not, you know, I definitely I would definitely have this schematic right down here marked out. All right. Um, it is super clean. If you haven't back tested the entry, I would definitely back test the entry as well. So there's there was two really good entries, and then of course the mitigation of of what I'm looking for price to come back into. So I would definitely keep an eye on it. You know, it it. I mean, the first entry was two pips. I don't even know. I don't even know what this second one was. I know we back tested this one. Hold on. The second entry, I don't even know if we can get that low. Let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. So the second entry was 1.6 pips. So you had you had some really good opportunities in there. Um, are your fibs based on Wyckoff structure? Are my fibs based on Wyckoff structure? Man, um, I'm going to say no because I don't know what Wyckoff structure is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know what, I don't know what you mean by Wyckoff structure, but my, you mean like my 15, 80% fibs? Yeah. I'm those, those are kind of just some back test stuff. So Mike, would you say a lot of reaccumulation redistrict shakeouts play 50%? Man, you know, not, not really. Um, <clears throat> I really don't have, and I guess I can't really, I can't, I can't say to, with some kind of absolution that, it does well you know what here's the answer for you ben so um <clears throat> every every schematic or reaccumulation that i played into um plays off the 50 whether or not it plays exactly off the 50 or it comes down to the 80 you know that's that's where it comes into um but you've got that's why that's why, like, what do I always kind of say? Like, if it's, if you can play the 50, play the 50, right? If I, if the 50 is just way out of your, your, your stop loss range, then you got to go to the 80, you know, but I'm not, I'm not going to, if, if I've got a difference, if my 80, right, if my 80 is two pips and my 50 is three pips, yeah, I'm taking the 50 all day long, right? Um, because I know that if it does come into the 80, well, the 50 got triggered, you know, but it doesn't necessarily always have to come to the 80. So I actually, I actually don't have like, I don't track the data to see how often it comes into one or the other. I just, I, I, you know, I, um, I aggregate them. So I, I put them together just to kind of have a, an overall understanding of it. 
Um, sorry, I meant to say the cycle, accumulation, distribution, etc. cetera. Um, no, no, no. My, the only thing I use my FIBs for are for uh, my entry protocol. So, like, it, it has nothing to do with... Um, like the the schematic itself it's it's just you know where i'm potentially going to be taking my entry from if that if that kind of makes sense check gy bro i don't know what the heck gy is man i'm guessing gj is what you're saying the yen yeah yeah cool cool okay man you got it yeah Bear with me, hold on. I think one of my daughters are coming home. Let me mute the ring cameras. Otherwise, you're going to hear the zoo. All right, there we go. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I would, I would say this. You know, um, I, I'm, I'm always, I'm always going to try to take the entry, right? It just, it's, it's gotta be, you know, if you're going to split entry, you know, if you're going to, depending if you're going to be a full, a full split, or if you're going to, you know, how many times have you seen me throw majority of my risk on the 50% and then tr throw a little bit of risk on that 80, you know, cause if I did get, if I do get popped on that 80, the, just the R to R on it is going to make up for it. So I'd rather have more volume in that 50 than the 80. You know, it's just sometimes that 50 is just not going to happen. You know, I'm, I'm stuck with a, what was it? I think the other day I was like a, a 14 point, a 14 pip stop loss on a trade. And I was like, it's just not going to happen. So, um, but yeah, I would, I would definitely have this marked out if you, if you don't have it already, cause I think it's going to be pretty important, uh, come our next market cycle that we see on it. The, uh, and then of course the other thing that I'd be, you know, ideally looking at is, is from a back test perspective, what, what could you have caught in here? You know, because there was, um, I mean, there was definitely, I, I said what, like the first one was two pips. The other one was one and 1. 1.6, you know, and we saw this market go 293 pips, you know, so you're, you're looking at a, at a one to 100 plus, you know, with spread on that. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So NJ, NJ, I'm definitely, I'm a buyer on it. I'm looking for buys the, um, you know, you can see that I have an alert right here. Right, because if we do come back down into specifically this reaccumulation right here, right, this is the reaccumulation that I'll, I'll be looking at. Reason for me that's kind of important. It's a um, essentially it's a it's a London into New York price action reaccumulation. So if we come into there, I'll be looking at it, and uh, I'll be looking for the continuation play. Uh, but again, NJ has not broken any order flow yet, right, and. I really, I didn't even look at it this morning. I was, I was more on AJ and yeah. So you can kind of see what I was looking at this morning. You know, we had, we had Asian session come in. We, we didn't get the manipulation. That's why I was playing AJ because AJ actually takes the low before making the high. Um, but AJ just never gave me another re-entry and you can kind of see like order flow wise, we're just being maintained from this low right here. That makes that high. So <clears throat> How do I do my top down? Um, what do you mean? How do I do it? I just start on my like daily or weekly time frame and mark out my market cycle and my structure points. Yeah. Um, and it's an S. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, it was an SC. So that's that's what I'll be looking at. Um, again, like what what gets me in this market right now? Um, you know, ideally, we can see. You know, we know we we know we had a type two accumulation here. Right. And we know we broke this high. So we know that this is a, a, you know, minor sign of strength. Well, you know, we could see a Creek and if we get something like in the, in, in the realm of Frankfurt doing its thing, like it normally does. And then we break, well, man, that's, that's my buy point, right? That's my buy point. So we get, we get the, we get the confirmed reaccumulation in a bullish market where we're still maintaining order flow. Yeah. Game, game on. Um, and even if we don't, Right. Even if we don't get the manipulation, you know, it looks it looks like we already have a, a pretty decent schematic being printed there, um, you know, but it, it's hard to like speculate what London's going to do. Ideally, I know that if 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 Frankfurt or London sweeps that and then we make a new high, I know that's the manipulation. So I'll be looking for the mitigation of price to come back down, pop it and we go off. So that's what I'll be looking at. All right. So NJ, AJ, I'm looking for buys on them. Um, 
the we'll talk about U.S. dollar Swiss franc because this is the this is the trade I took this morning, and we'll kind of we'll kind of play it out here. Bear with me one sec. So we, you know we we've been talking about U.S. dollar Swiss franc for a while. Um, you know I'm still holding I'm still holding buys from down here. And I have no no desire to to close them out, right? I mean, I've taken I took partials, you know, when we took this high. My next area to take partials is ninety three sixty when we get up here. And I mean, just looking at, you know, when you look at a chart, um, you know, one of the things I always ask myself is who's in control, buyers or sellers, right? So, um, you know, when you when you look here, let me just hide all this shenanigans. So when we look at just this overall so let's let's go from like august is price action right all the way to current you got to ask yourself who's in control buyers or sellers and when you when you when you finally get to that point where you're under sell when you understand like who's controlling this market you you know exactly what you're looking for and that's why i've just been continuing to buy 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 right remember in a bullish market what's important the the the, the lows or the highs and it's it's the lows, right? You can't, you know, if you don't make a new high, it doesn't mean that sellers are in control. But if you make a new low, it means that sellers have re, have, have taken control from buyers. Um, so kind of playing playing into that, you know, I talked about talked about last week, the week before, and the week before that, just the buys that I'm looking to take on US dollar Swiss franc. Well, when we you know, ideally, I was looking for after taking these buys, right? We know that we're in this leg of order flow, um, and what I wanted price to do was come back either into this reaccumulation was the first area that I wanted to see us come into. All right, so we do, right? We we actually get well, what day was that? That was the twenty first of February, right? We actually get some some decent price action. I already and I talked about it two weeks ago. The buys that we saw out of that, right? Um, what I wanted to see was I just wanted to see the continuation move, right? So when we come over, right, when we come over and you can just see market cycle, right? I know I don't have the reaccumulation marked out, but hold on, I'll, I'll put it up there. So we have a reaccumulation, right? Reaccumulation coming out of our accumulation, ultimately making a, let me set this up right here. Hold on. There we go. Ultimately making a new high. Okay. So immediately when I see when I see this off of my you know intraday time frame, what am I looking at? I'm looking at buys out of here because this is what's maintaining, and I'm looking at buys out of here because this was that leg that pushed up and made the high, right? This is what started this break to confirm reaccumulation. This is what also created this break, and this is what created that break up there. So and you know, ideally, what am I looking for? I'm looking for buys if we come down lower. Um, but in a market that's bullish. And, you know, like somebody said earlier, hasn't given a lot of mitigation. You got to play the continuation play. Right. So this morning I woke up, um, I saw, you know, in my opinion, what I saw was, all right, you know, we got We got an opportunity. Right. We have price that has created a distribution. Right. So we have a distribution in the works right here. We know that this is the most smallest form of order flow. We know that, you know, you don't drink the yellow snow. So I got Asian price action sitting here. And then what happens? London manipulates it. So after that manipulation and the break, now the key for me was this. Not only did we break this, but you can see this arrow. We break that most recent high. And when we did that, that gave me a lot of confidence to say, okay, you know what? I'm going to take this trade. I'm going to measure out my uh, my position and I'm going to take it off the 80% of the shakeout. So measuring my manipulation, because I know that that's where they sold and that's where they bought. I took it off the 80%, got filled here. You know, as soon as we, we got this run, reduced my risk, paid myself the risk on the trade here. And, you know, I mean, I don't know what she's sitting at now, but for me, it's a couple hundred bucks in profit, right? So at the at the first take profit area it was a one to nine and a half. And I mean it's probably like right at a, like a one to ten. Yeah, one to ten and a half is what she's sitting at. So my goal is to take this up. I told everybody this morning what I was looking to do with it is take it up to ninety three five hundred. At ninety three five hundred, I'm gonna secure half of my volume out of it because at that point, once we secure that ninety three five hundred slot. Right. We have effectively made a new leg in our order flow. Right. Because what this is that ninety three uh, five hundred slot right up here. This is that distribution that absolutely did nothing. So if we get up here. Right. 
at this point, this is now what is maintaining our structure point, and we can come all the way back down into our slingshot, right? Same thing, if we come all the way up here and make this high, right? Now we do have an order flow leg. It's not just order flow, but it's an order flow leg. And we can continue to come back down and come all the way into the extreme. So that's why I'm going to secure those profits. I'm going to leave the runner, right? I'm going to keep 50% volume on, but I'm going to continue to play that up. Um, do I use a specific time frame or just check all the time frames at once? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not cemented to one. So, you know, the, for me, being able to see multiple time frames and being able to see the market transpire the way it does is is the key. Like price action is different on so many time frames. Like I'm doing myself a disservice by just sitting on one. So anyway, that that's US dollars was frank. That's where I'm looking to to play it. You know, obviously I'm gonna be playing as long as we don't as essentially as long as I don't hit break even, I'm just gonna be continuing to play the continuation move, right? So you know, if price, if price comes back and let's just say that we hypothetically, right? Say, say we get this during Asian, right? And we get, this is Frankfurt, right? And we do that. Guess what? I'm, I'm stacking another position right there and I'm going to play it up, right? That's ideally how I'm going to play it. How do you add your spread in your stop loss in a buy? Um, add it to your, your spread goes into the entry stop loss is at the bottom of that wick so if this is that's your stop loss that's your stop loss right but if you got to add you got to add your uh your spread to your entry price and sells oh well and sells is just into the stop loss it's not the entry price yeah 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 so on a sell side you got to add it to your stop loss the entry price is is the true price on a buy you got to add it to your entry price and the stop loss is the true price so Unless you get some of these shady brokers, man. And when you got a shady broker or someone who doesn't have a, a big liquidity pool, um, you, you might want to add like maybe half of a pip to your to your stop loss and, and vice versa, just because uh, there's a lot of that going on, man. A lot of that going on. All right. So that's US dollars was frank, right? And again, I'm, I'm looking for continuation buys. Uh, this, this for me was just pretty clean. Um, so I was happy. I was happy. And, and the, the driving force was the session time that, that, that happened in, right. I needed Frankfurt or London to be the manipulation. I needed New York to be the mitigation. So once we got that, that was enough for me to pull the trigger on it. Um, okay. And, Oh, wow. I just noticed. I don't know if you guys, uh, some of you guys can't see this, but uh, old old Ethereum gas prices are are actually pretty low right now. Look at that. Imagine that. If you guys got to do an ERC-20 uh, transactions, now's the time to do it, apparently. Um, all right. So we talked about NJ, AJ, US dollars was frank. Let's talk about the glorious pound US dollar. So <clears throat> like I said, I mean, I've, I've been selling the crap out of this thing for a while. And I was looking for a hedge this morning buy, but I decided against it, and I'm glad I did. Uh, how do you calculate your lot size? Um, I mean, you probably want to get yourself a position size calculator. So if, um, if you know, there's, you can do my effects book is a source that you can use. I used to use that back in the day. Um, but yeah, I, I use, I use a, a built-in position size calculator in my MT5 on my desktop. So there's a there's a video on my YouTube if you if you want to learn like you see how to use it and where to download it from it's on my YouTube the links in there you can you can do that if not um, like I said my FX book is is one you can use but yeah I don't, I don't know if I could ever go back to manually finding out the uh, the lot sizes I, I like the automation on it the other way to do is is if also if you're if you've got a if you got a broker, right? Like I use a Wanda. If you have a broker, that's one of these bad boys right here. Uh, a lot of these are actually. So I think that really the only so AMP is a uh, a futures. I know I don't know about Alpaca. Uh, Trade Station can't use so bits. Oh, Bitstamps on here too. Look at that. Um, so really, the only forex ones are a Wanda and Forex.com. So if you use those, you can use the built-in um, uh, built-in position size calculator that's that's embedded into TradingView. So. How does your routine on a daily, 
What do you mean? Uh, like, what's my routine? Stinu is also a good app for position size. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think they started charging though, right? Didn't they start charging now? Fifteen bucks. Get out of here, bro. For what? What 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 I mean, I know it's only fifteen bucks, but still what 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 do they offer? What do they offer in their app that is worth fifteen bucks? Like I would just download FX book on your, well, I mean, you know, you guys know my position on trading from a phone anyway. So I would, I would just click over here to my FX book on, if I, if I didn't have it embedded into my MT5, I would just down, I would just use it off of the, uh, the, uh, the, my FX book, but man, that takes forever. And and I'll tell you right now, I, I wouldn't be catching these smaller time frame uh, positions. You trying to, trying to use a position size calculator. Uh, Nash markets has a good free one too. Okay. Yeah. 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 Like I said, I, I just, I use the one that's embedded in an MT five. It's a little finicky sometimes when you're trying to do indices, but you know, some of the, some of the position size calculators that you get out there don't even have the indices. So, you know, it's a give and take. Um, did I catch the sell? Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been, I've been selling the crap out of GU for a while. Um, I mean, I'm in this one. Where is it? Well, we'll get to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, we, we know we know we're bearish, right? I mean, there. Listen, this is this is if if the if there was ever such thing as like art on the chart, this is it, right? I mean, it, it's not. You know, you you've got you've got price action, you've got comeback, you got price action. I mean, expansionary move, the pullback into just perfect supply points. You know, so you know you've done it once, you've done it twice, you've done it three times, you've done it four times. And what are the chances that we've now just made a new low and we're going to come back either into here or the extreme? You know, I'm not a betting man, but I'm willing to you know to, to put some money down on that one, right? So I'm I'm waiting, right? I'm waiting on GU. The the damn thing's just been very elusive. Um, you know, I uh, yeah, on GU I was waiting for market to come back to 136 to 130 yeah 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 well i mean oh well you, you made it sound like you've been waiting you've been waiting like me listen i've been waiting for price to come back i got i've got a limit order i've got a limit order right up here at like 142 and change so i thought that's where you were waiting um no if you're only waiting at 136 you're good give it just here's here's my suggestion right like if if you're struggling with like the patience part of it go back and and measure out every one of these bad boys, right? Like, so when we make a new low, right? When we make a new low, so from the time we make a new low to the time it comes back to entry, how long did that take? 13 days, right? So how long did the next one take? Well, the next one took, so from here to the entry was 21 days. And how long from this one here to it came back to our extreme entry? And this one took 62 days. So, you know, make just... You know, like for me, that's one of the things I always do. I always measure out how long did this schematic or how long did this price action take for me to get my confirmations and how long did the move actually take? You know, once I started realizing, man, I might have to wait 30 days. I might have to wait 40 days for this trade. Sounds good. You know, um, you know, and if you miss the leg, right? Like if you miss this trade right here, stand by, set your alert at the low, wait for it to break play the play the pullback right when it comes back into your supply point catch that all right so you missed out on you know 30 days of this trade but now you caught that one you know um yeah i mean it's it's you you just got to make sure that you're 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 a player in the game you know um who was it uh is i don't know if chris is on here so Chris was selling the crap out of EJ and I, I did a back test on it, man. It was an awesome play. Um, you know, I don't know how many times, I don't know how many losses he took on EJ, but he finally caught one and it, and it went, I think it was like a one to 180. So, you know, his, his seven, 10, 15 losses at a quarter percent were just wiped out by that one, one to 180. Um, so anyway, yeah, yeah. So what I'm what I'm looking at, right? Like where, where am I going to be a player on GU? You know, I mean, we know that, this distribution up here where I'm holding that cell right up there, right? You guys remember, like we talked about that in January, um, you know, why I took that cell, where I was taking it to. And of course, I'm looking for price to come back into this distribution that confirmed the redistro, right? So I'm looking in here and I'm looking in here 
And, you know, obviously if price comes back into this point right here, which is another redistribution, I'm a, I'm a player in that, right? I'm, I'm looking for, for price to come back in this area here. You know, if it doesn't, what do I got to do? I got to play the continuation move. You know, um, one thing I'm not going to do, and I, I tried to do it this morning, you know, you'll see right here. I try to play the, the, you know, the hedge on it. Cause I'm holding massive cells on this thing. Um, I try to play the hedge and you know, I got into it and then I quickly got out of it because I don't think this is going to play nice. I think, I think this is end up, you, I mean, you can already kind of see what I'm anticipating, just the redistribution. So, you know, it, it ended up taking me out. No big deal. It is what it is. Um, you know, I got in off of this 80%. We made the high, you know, I, I ended up just breaking it even and got taken out. So now what I'm waiting for is just the redistribution. So if we, I'll tell you right now, because we're such a bearish market, you know, I know that we're mitigating from here, right? I know that price, hold on. I know that price, come on, get over here. Come on, trading view. There we go. All right, there we go. So I know price, right? We got our, the old Frankfurt uh, manipulation, right? I know that we came in there. Come on. Zoom's acting up again. All right, here we go. I know we came into there and I'm not a betting man, but I'm pretty convinced that this comes into a pretty important Fibonacci number. I'm, I'm almost positive just by eyeballing this sucker. I, I guarantee you, I think. I may have misspoken though. I think it may just come just shy. Oh no, it did go past the 50. Okay. Anyway, so we come into it, right? And then we redistribute. So we can just see over and over again, a redistribution, a redistribution. So by golly, if this thing ends up coming and doing something in here like this and then redistributing, right? Guess what? I'm a player here, right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into this market off the redistribution, but I got to wait for the confirmation of redistribution. So, yeah. And for anybody who, um, who missed last week's session, definitely look at this cell because I, I missed this one. This one right here is the one I missed. And this one right here would be sitting, this one would be sitting and, and I only missed it cause I'm, I'm, you know, I got, you know, even, even I do get some disorganization or I, I forget about things. And this was a one to 696.75. So I missed it. It is what it is. You know, I had, I had it marked out. I just, I just forgot to put the limit border back in. I was, you know, I was too, I was too convinced that we were not going to go up into that high that, you know, I completely missed it, but it is what it is. I'm going to keep that up there just to remind me not to miss the stupid limit orders anymore. Uh, EU has a better hedge opportunity. Uh, I don't know if it's got a better hedge opportunity, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um, we'll take a look at it. After we got the break of structure and never came back to 130, so I couldn't find a continuation. I trust enough to take the sell. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you right now, like where where I played out of was was right here. You know, uh, what was it the 23rd? That's where I played out of it. And, you know, I, I honestly haven't got it back in. You know, everything I wanted to play out of just didn't give me the entry. So you could see like I'm I mean, I was trying to work it. You know, we were we were there. You know, I was I was looking for I had a I had an entry out of this up here. And, you know, we fell shy of it. So I was like, all right, no big deal. You know, especially because I knew that this distribution led to that. Um, and then I was looking for continuation plays out of something in here. And you could see we just we just never came back. So, you know, sometimes sometimes you'll you'll track and, and stalk the, the pair for a while before you finally get get into an entry. So, you know, I'm, I'm not. I, I can I can guarantee you this. I'm I'm not uh, I'm not worried that um, I'm going to miss out on GU. It's it's going to give me the opportunity. So um, so that's that's GU, right? That's what I was looking for GU, uh, and I'll still I'm still continuing to look for the cells, right? I'm still looking for cells. Um, what gets me in is the continuation move, um, but I've got to wait for that confirmed redistribution. Okay. Uh, the other one I'm looking at is and I'm, all the euro gbp buyers are going to hate this one but i'm looking for a sell on a euro gbp right um i'm looking i'm looking for continuation place right i'm i i hit break even on my buy right um hit break even on the buy but that is why i am still holding cells from man i don't even know where i'm holding these things from anymore i got so i'm in where's she at i think i might have to go to a one hour chart to see it 
So I know one of them's up here somewhere. And I know one's up here. Is it up here? Let's see. Yeah, okay. So I'm holding cells from September 29th. I'm holding cells from uh, July 21st. And I'm holding cells from this one right in here, which was December 21st. So those are really the only cells I'm, I'm in on uh, your GBP. Now, you know, obviously, where am I looking? I'm looking for us to come back into here like I was looking originally, or I'm looking for us to come back into the redistribution that confirmed the break, right? Um, that should be illegal. <laughs> yeah, I mean... I remember, I mean, look, just look back at all the videos, right? Look at, look at the last like two months, three months, right? I, I was adamant that I'm not closing my cell on your GBP, right? I'm not closing the cells. I'm holding them. There's no reason we haven't really seen other than, I mean, and, and going back to it, right? I mean, I know I don't have, I, I think I don't have it. Hold on. Let me just see. Do I have it? I think I, I think I got it on another pair. Hold on. See, is it FXCM that I wrote it out on? Oh yeah, yeah, it's FXCM. Here you go. <laughs> I still haven't deleted it. Oh look, and it's it's doing exactly what I thought it was gonna do. <laughs> when did I mark this out? I marked this out over here. Um, I guess early February. All right, so this is why I didn't I didn't close out of my cell because look at how many times buyers got duped, right? I mean, when you when you just hide the drawings, we're just bearish, right? I mean, we we have yet. We have yet to take out, remember, in a bearish market, what's important, not the highs, not the lows, but the highs, right? We have yet to take out any highs that make a low. So we're just massively bearish on this. So that's that's pretty funny. That thing is still played out. So um, no, I'm happy, bro. I'm happy with the cells. I'm, I'm very happy with the cells. You know what? You know what? I kick myself over, though. I kick myself that. And, and this is just like how I evolved in trading. I kick myself that I'm not holding the cells. I don't know if I still have this marked out up here. Let me see. I got into cells. Man, when did I get into cells? Like 2020, I got into cells up here. Maybe forex.com. Let's see. I kick myself that I didn't. I didn't. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. No, no. This was this was the buy. It was up here. Let's just see. Yeah, no, no, it's all it's all taken down. All right, I guess I cleaned out the charts. Yeah, um, I kicked myself for closing those trades because I, I I should have known better. You know, I know it was 2020. It was still early in my like my my journey of Wyckoff and understanding market cycle and stuff. But you know, I I had the tools there. I just I should have just let it play out. Um, so yeah, what, what am I looking for now? You know, this, I'll tell you this morning, I was looking for continuation play, right? You could see it here. Like we, we started to, to build a distribution, but what were, what were we lacking? Right. Um, you know, like how, how was I going to play this? You could see, I've got my alert here, right here. So when we built this micro, if we would have sent this down and broken this low, I would have, you could see my 1580. I was, I was a seller from there, but no break of structure, no trade. Right. I'm not I'm not going to play this. I mean, so ultimately what we ended up doing was just being a, a bullish momentum reaccumulation. So, you know, where where am I looking now on your GBP? I mean, there she is. Right. I mean, we have the, the typical Frankfurt manipulation taking out the Asian highs and we come into this play. I'll be looking uh, I'll be looking for some kind of. Um, you know, evidence that sellers are coming into the market. So we, we trade up here, you know, tonight and we build something. Yeah. Like I, I'll, I'll be that right there. gets me that right there. gets me in this trade and then send this sucker down, you know, and I'll be targeting this low. So we're, we're talking 82, 100, 83, 500. We're, we're talking about 140 pip move just to make, you know, the next low. So that's, that's ideally what I'll be looking for for eg now can we trade higher yeah, absolutely we could trade higher you know um 100 we can get up into the extreme of this uh, of this leg and you know that gets me a seller it gets me into being a seller as well just just keep in mind fundamentally what's going on right like when we think of a, a comparable strength 
Um, what? Um, oh, hold on. Let's see what we got going on here. Bear with me one sec. My my mining rigs alarm went off. Oh, I'm gonna be doing for those of you guys that are are uh, are GPU mining. I'm I'm gonna be doing a grow tent. I, I'm gonna have to. My temperatures right now, my garage are 100 degrees with this Florida heat. So I'm at the point now where I've got to I've got to exhaust the heat. Uh, let's see. Is this your trading range for that distro? Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if this is that price action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, you've got you've got your one, two, three you know right we come back to well beyond 50 percent, and then that's the manipulation and and look even i mean i know you don't have the seconds bro but look in here because that's that's your micro so if you look right if we look right here So we have a micro, right? If you, right, you got it, your climax, your test, your up thrust, MSAL, and your UTAD, right? So this being your UTAD right there. So uh, how many lots are measured when using the volume profile fixed range indicator? Uh, how many lots are represented with the number like so that's that's in um, so it's in contract volume but okay so you like if you uh, do you know how futures contracts are, are traded you know like you have many contracts and you have full contracts so that is in full contracts and it's in multiple of thousands right it's one so like if you have if you have the number 20 that's 20,000 full lots if that makes sense, all right, on that price point. So it's in it's in one k, one k lots, but it's full lots, not mini lots. Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. So, yep, you got it, man. You got it. So anyway, yeah, I I'd be looking at that, and that's that's kind of what I got lined up. Like when you measure, you could see I've got, I've got my UTAD measured right here to here. And this is the fifty percent of it. This is the eighty percent of it. Right. And, um, you know, you can you can try to refine it a little more into that 80 percent, because if you come right here, I don't know if I can get that low on the. When was this? So, I mean, you can see it on the five second, right? So five second, the one second would be a little easier, but I don't know if I can get one second, but there she is. Right. So you got your climax, your test your up thrust, your UTAD, right? So if you want it to be, you know, like if, if there was a setup, if, if this was structure, right, or or the leg extreme, not that because it's not, right? If there was something that I would say, ah, you know what, I'm going to throw, I mean, what are we talking here? We're talking, we're talking half of a pip to the 80% and we're talking 1.4 pips to the 50%. Right. So, yeah, if there was something that you'd throw a couple dollars at, that's probably it right there. 50 percent of the of the super duper micro. Yeah. So I actually may just screenshot this for a second. Actually, I had it marked out. I did have it marked out earlier. Yeah. Let me just make sure I got it, though. Hold on. Bear with me one second here. All right, cool. There we go. Um, so that's, yeah, that's that's kind of what gets me in on EG, right? That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the shorts on it. Um, ideally, I want to see if, if if price can get up into that area for me, right? And we'll we'll see what happens after that. Um, the the other one that's on my to do list, right? Chef JPY, I've been I've been on this thing uh, pretty pretty extensively, and I I ended up taking a small loss this morning on it. We'll we'll kind of go through it real quick, but 
we'll, uh, you know, again, we're, we're bullish, right? I mean, we know we're bullish intraday. We're bullish. We know we're bullish from lower time frame structure. We know that price has accumulated and much like I, I spoke about last week, I was expecting a reaccumulation out of this. And, and of course we got it right. We got the reaccumulation. So now it's what, what gets me into this trade. Um, what I ended up trying to play, uh, this morning was, was right out of here, but you can kind of see like we have our manipulation, right? This manipulation sends this up. So, you know, ideally what I want to do is I want to play anywhere below the 50% of this push. Um, and that's what, that's what price kind of gave me, right? Um, you know, we can, we can see that price came in and how I played this was this, right? So I ended up taking an entry off the 50% of the, uh, the accumulation that occurs here, right? It was about a six pip stop. I ended up paying myself the risk once we made this high. So right around here, actually, no, it was New York session. I take it back. It was right around here where I uh, ended up playing, paying myself the risk. So we come back down and we actually, it hits my break even, right? So now I was trying to play out of this, uh, ended up hitting my stop loss. And then I try to get back in off of here. And it just never gave me the the entry um, coming down to like the one minute. You can kind of see like my thought process on this, right? Like we were, you know, do, does it come to the 50%? Yes, it comes to the 50%, right? Am I going to play? First of all, it comes in at 630. So that's not going to be an entry. But this is where it does come in in the afternoon. It misses it by 0.2 pipettes. But there was never a, a chance that I was going to have a 10 and a half pip stop loss. Right. Um, so now, right now, what gets me into Chef JPY buys? Right. Well, what gets me into Chef JPY buys is I want an overall confirmation of a reaccumulation. And that will only occur if we take this high up here. Right. So what I'd be looking for is this is our distribution. Right. So we had an accumulation. We had our shakeout. Now we have our distribution right here. OK. With a creek. And now I just need us to go ahead and, and make a new high. We make a new high, you know, depending on how we do it. So like if we just went straight up from here, right, my point of interest would still like I'd, I'd have that right here as my point of interest that I'm going to have a limit order potentially out of. And then if we come back into the slingshot, which causes that high, I'd take an accumulation. Right. Um, that's kind of what's going to get me into Chef JPY buys. Um, I'm there. I agree, you know, 100 percent with the buys. I, I, I'm looking for the buys. Um, but I just need now price to kind of give me the price action that I want to see. All right. Um, and we might get it, you know, again, um, you know, if we, if we can get that push to the upside and then come back for the mitigation of it, that's, that's ultimately where I'm going to be working the entries in. Uh, so that's, that's shift JPY. The, what you got, bro? What you got? Do you just move, you just measure the entire thing? I think that's what I did, right? Hold on. Mm -hmm. I think that's what I did. Well, it's uh, 33, right? 33? Yeah, yeah, that's what I did. Yeah, yeah. So I've I've got that one there. I, I measure the whole thing. So yeah, it's, it's like 124.33 is the entry. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I got, I got the same thing. I got the same thing. I actually, yeah, I know I've got the same thing. I just, the way I labeled it was this, like I just, I move this to that and I move this to that, but it's, it, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 No, this, this is, yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm still, like I said, I'm still a buyer on it. So yeah, no, no, I like it. Good chart, man. Good chart. Okay. Um, so that's Chef JPY. We talked about AJ. All right. So th that's everything that I was looking at relatively for the morning. Um, the So EU, I know somebody had mentioned like a good buy hedge on EU, but man, I, I honestly don't see it. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah, man, trading view is just so slow. A buy hedge on EU. No, I mean, I'll tell you this. I'm a... I don't know if you guys saw my, uh, I think I posted on Instagram. So I'm still holding, I'm still holding those cells from like 
September. I had to go on the weekly chart because you can't even see it on the daily chart anymore. Um, but yeah, where, where am I selling from yeah, all day long? I mean, right here, you know, we, we come back, we come back into this price action right here, or we come back into this freaking FOMC manipulation. I'm a seller, right? That's what I want to see price get back into. Um, yeah, we'll see as far as the hedge though, man, like I, I think GU gave me the better hedge. I just don't see anything on here that I, I'd, I'd be willing to take a buy on, um, There's just nothing there's even on this smallest form, there's just nothing. I mean, we're still, if you think about it, like we're still, yeah, there's just nothing. There's absolutely nothing. So we only now just broke. Let's see. So we broke, uh, so we broke order flow, the lowest form of order flow right here. Right. When we did that. And we just never did anything after that. Like this is just, this is just, I don't know. It's nothing that I would, it's nothing that I would risk my sell um, positions for capital to get into. Um, you know, like if, if we would have, if we would have broken here and then came back down and gave me some, some kind of accumulation here, right? Okay. You know, even if you, even if you want to say, all right, so like here's your leg and here's 50%, right? So we come into 50%. And this is why I was more partial to GU than EU because we really don't sweep liquidity here, right? Like Frankfurt had the opportunity, right? Frankfurt had the opportunity to really do some 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 business and it just didn't. Um, you know, this is this is what we got. This is what we got right here. So had <clears throat> had this gave the sweep below here, then I'm a player, right? I'm a player on it, but we didn't. And it's just, for me, there's just nothing I want to, I want to capitalize on because in this sense here, right? We're, we're just sideways, you know I mean? Maybe, maybe if like we didn't get this price action here and maybe like this breaks, you know, and you could say, okay, well, you know, we did accumulate here and we, we accumulated in here that maintains this leg. Then, then, then I, you know, then we got a different story, but when I was looking at it this morning, man, it, it just didn't give anything. I don't even think it, I don't even think it mitigated this, uh, this schematic here. This is why I don't trade Asian session. How many people would have taken that spring right there? How many people would have been like, all right, look, it's an accumulation during Asian session. Boom, boom. I'm going to play out of this and, you know, get rocked, right? Get rocked only to see price just do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it actually, what does she come into? Hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to give me a sec. I'm, now you, now, now you've piqued my interest on this. So moral of story, when price doesn't come back to mitigate a distro or an accumulation, we should wait for a redistro. Yeah, yeah, just play the continuation move. Play the continuation move. Yeah, no, there's there's nothing there I would have played. Nothing. I mean, I know I, I can I can see she comes back into like 50% of it, but there's nothing I'm going to play. All right. No worries. Um, measure the 50, 80 of March 9th, Jake. All right. Hold on. Let's see. Of March 9th. March 9th. You talking about this move right here? Or. Hold on. Because this would have been. This would have been March 8th. Wait. March 9th. Zoom out. All right. Hold on. Oh, of 2020. Oh, geez, bro. 2020. Let's see. Talking about this right here. I thought I had that marked out. Hold on. Where'd it go? I thought I had it marked out. 
Maybe it's on the daily. Hold on. Oh, yeah, there it is on the daily. Yeah, but I, I think it misses. I think it misses the 80%, man. Let me just see. Hold on. I think it misses. Oh, no. It gets it. It gets it. Absolutely. Man, why do I use the 80%? I don't know. I don't know. Somebody told me I should use the... The 73.7. I mean, the stop loss is a little... <laughs> <laughs> the stop loss is a little, uh, a little much. You had it marked out. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've listen, where do I have, <clears throat> where did I have it out? I mean, I had it marked out. Wait, did I, did I have it here? Hold on. Let me see. Do I have EU here? I had it marked out somewhere. Uh, no, but this is dollar index. Maybe it was on dollar index where I, I had, uh, I, oh, you know what it was dollar index. That's what it was. Yeah. I just, I think this is going to be the bounce. I don't think, I don't think this is going to be where, uh, I don't think this is going to be the turning point that gets us to go higher. I think this is just a reason for us to get back into here. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Um, I was right, G. You melted. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, funny enough, those of you guys that know what I'm talking about, <laughs> as soon as I figured out who else was buying GU, I quickly got out of my GU buy. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, I used, I used my secondary confirmation. <laughs> all right anyway so um yeah i mean eu eu i'm just waiting on i'm just waiting the ult it is the ultimate confirmation absolutely just you just gotta buy you you market execute on whatever they're doing the opposite and you're good <laughs> you just do the opposite so uh yeah so eu I'm, i'll tell you this uh acad ncad au and nu i'm really just kind of leaving um until we really get some kind of better better structure when, when it comes to this right so if you if you pay attention indices are doing this right so when indices are doing this that means that they are in a essentially a risk off sentiment right so because you're risk off that means that gold and the u.s dollar should be doing this and that's what i don't know if you guys have paid attention to what the, the metals market's doing right so when you see that <clears throat> that's ultimately what's going to give you that push well also if you haven't been paying attention oil you know those of you guys that maybe you're paying maybe you're paying like 50 cents a gallon um but anybody in the real world it's it's ridiculous it is ridiculous what's going on with oil so because oil is going crazy that means that you're going to have the canadian dollar appreciate because gold's going crazy that means that you're going to have the australian dollar appreciate and if the australian dollar is appreciating it means the kiwis appreciating so because of everything that's going on here whether it's profit taking or risk off sentiment and because of the dollar and this is why i think it's a risk off sentiment because we're just getting who knows why the dollar we're what did i do today i looked up the national debt and we're at like 30 trillion dollars how this is still going up who knows but we're going up gold's going up oil's going up so commodities across the board are extremely bullish and if that's the case you're going to see appreciation in the australian the new zealand and the cad right so because of that you know i'm not going to try to sell au nu a cad or ncad right now i don't want to fight the canadian dollar with oil i don't want to fight you know the gold market um so i'm just going to kind of be a spectator and watch what it does until uh stagflation it is i mean um who knows who knows what the what the heck is going on it's um you know we've we've seen a i mean damn we've we've seen just a tremendous uh a tremendous push i mean look at this look at look at the daily chart on gold man 
Look at the shenanigans. So, and we're we're gonna did we make an all time high? Oh, so close. We're we're almost there. We're gonna make an all time high. So, what's the correlation with odd NZD and gold? Uh, no clue, man. I have no clue what the what the correlation with it is. Yeah. Uh, what I have taken this. Let me see what you got. Confirms online chart. This was right before price accumulates. Was it on gold? Oh, um, what I have taken, uh, what the, this right here, what I have taken that, oh, hold on, what I've taken this. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, it's, that's, that's pretty damn clean. <laughs> What's it come in? Does it, does it come into the, it doesn't come to the 80 though, does it? Let's see. Yeah. But at the, at this point there's there's just nothing for me to play on gold. Like it 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 needs a tremendous pullback for me to be a buyer. You know what I mean? Like we're 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 coming up to all-time highs. You know, so like if I'm if I'm going to be a player in gold, I mean, where do I need it to come back to? I need it to come back to Let's see. So we know that this accumulation, I mean, here, here's the, well, hold on. I thought I had it marked out already. Give me a sec. Stupid trading view, bro. I know, we know that this is what started it, right? Hold on. We know that this is what started it right here. So ideally, what I'm going to be looking for is we know that we accumulated... We know that we reaccumulated, so we come back into this or into that, and that's where I'm buying from. But geez, I mean, that's two thousand pips. You know, I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm better off. I'm better off just going over to my safe and looking all the gold and silver bars in it and laughing at how how much I've appreciated in it. <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, I didn't even check what's what's the uh, what did silver do? Hold on. Where's silver? Is silver... Let's see. Did silver... Oh, yeah. No, we're not even there yet. See, I really want... I really want silver just to to go. But we'll see. We'll see what she does. Um, it came super close to the 80. I got you, man. I got you. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean definitely gold gold will make an all-time high right we're gonna we're gonna see that and that's that's the driving factor to why i think we're in a risk off sentiment um you know we're seeing uh, everything you're seeing oil you're seeing soybeans coffee beans you're seeing cotton you're seeing everything appreciate um you know some really we're seeing a lot of money going into these commodities driven and these commodity driven uh, backed currencies. Where can you buy physical gold? Um, I mean, I would, I would do, I would use a reputable broker. I mean, the the one I use is um, here. Hold on, these are who I use. Give me a sec. Let me get, let me get my, uh, uh, let me get my tokens, my pre. Everything was up three dollars in the whole store. Jeez, bro. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'm in the southeast, so we have like. Well, I don't. I, you're at Sam's, right? But did you see Costco's raising their uh, their their membership? Ridiculous. Anyway, this is this is where I buy my gold and silver. So I've I've definitely bought more silver just because I I want it to you know it's going to appreciate more than gold. But you can come here. You can buy you know coins or you can buy the bars. So. You know, um, I like the bars because they, they're they stackable. I, I could care less about, you know, like if they're the Canadian, you know, whatever. I just buy their regular stamp stuff. You know, when you go to sell it in 30, 40, 50 years, they're not going to measure it by, you know, what pretty design is on it. They're just going to put it on a scale and they're going to sell. They're going to give you the, the, the value of the weight. 
So I buy it, and this is where I buy it from. So it's appmex.com, right? That's that's where I do it from. You can buy. Um, the other thing too is if you're going to buy large quantities of it and you don't have the ability to store it, which you know, good for you. Um, then, you know, you can actually, you can uh, just pay a small fee and they'll actually store it for you. So, but this is who I use right here. Um, yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah. I mean, I've, I haven't bought any silver in a while. Um, the last time I bought, we were down at like 22 cents, but I bought a ton uh, last year when we were, you know, during the COVID during the COVID drop, when we came in here and gave this accumulation, when we were, I started buying around like the $13 mark. So everywhere in here, uh, when I saw this massive accumulation, uh, $15, $16 is where I was buying. So, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Even, even my lowest, my lowest point, I think it was 13 bucks. It was like 13 and change. So even in here, I mean, I'm sitting at about a hundred percent increase, you know, so everything I've, I paid, I've, I've already doubled my return on it. Um, so that's, that's what I'm looking at currencies. Um, when it comes to indices, right? Indices, listen, I've been, I've been, it's, it's not a secret, right? I've been bearish as crap on this and I've been trying to sell them. Um, you know, when we look at, when we look at what's going on, um, you can kind of see like the play I'm looking at, right? So I wanted us to, I wanted us to come back into our slingshot that created the break. And, you know, you can see we come into 50% of it. We actually tap it, but unfortunately I didn't get an entry in. Uh, you can see that we do have a distribution right here. And I was just waiting for this low to get taken. So if that low was able to get taken, I was going to, you know, definitely I wanted to see something like this on NASDAQ, right? I wanted to see that. Um, I was looking at cells this morning, you know, lower time frame, just kind of see what I was going to get into. And, um, you know, ultimately what I wanted was just the low, right? You can see I've got, I've got the alert and if, ah, hold on, if we would have gone, so if we, if we would have distributed, redistributed and walk this down, right. I would have, I would have taken it out of here. Um, but we're not getting any lows, right? I mean, if you think about what today did, absolutely nothing. You know, it just, it took everybody, anybody that got into buys or sells today got taken out. Um, what if they had a stop loss and if they didn't, you know, they're whatever, they're at like break even. So I'm, I'm personally just going to be sitting back waiting for price to, at this point, I need us to make a new low, right? Because we're, we're in an area of demand that has broken order flow, right? So if we can do this, then I'm a seller out of this manipulation from yes from this morning, or I'm a seller from this distribution right here. That's ideally how I'm going to attack NASDAQ. Um, and then, you know, US 30 and SPX are the same exact place, right? I'm looking, right? I'm looking for just from the short term, right? I want to see, and you can see I was, I was looking for us to play out of, come on, Zoom. All right. Um, I was looking for us to play out of previous New York price action, right? And we just came just short of it. So whatever it is, what it is, right? Because I mean, when you're when you're walking when you're walking the order flow down, that's this is exactly what you're seeing, right? Um, so at this point, if we make this low, I just want us to take this low right here, right? I want us to take that low before I come back and play. So tonight. You know, in a perfect world, uh, what I'd love to see is I'd love to see the London melt, right? Give me the London melt right here. Boom, like that. And then what I would play, right, is I would play a New York distribution. So we get this and then, you know, we start doing something like along that lines coming in. I want to see a distribution out of here, which is maintaining this leg, right? That's what I want to play. And, uh, and the same goes for us 30, right? I mean, I'm just trying to play the continuation moves. You can see this came. Oh, so close right there. this came all oh, so close to where I wanted it to come into, right? Because what are we playing? We're playing this right here is that next leg that came down. So, you know, U 30, this, this one still, man, this one still breaks my heart. This right here was, what date was this? This was the 3rd of March. So this was last week. This one broke my heart, man. That's that's how much I missed that entry by. I missed her by, I don't even think it was like two points. It was, that's, that's what she came into. 
That's where she came to. So my entry was at 062, and this came to 053. So uh, eight points. Missed me by eight points. So I was pretty upset with that, but you know, it is what it is. And she'd be, she'd be sitting pretty good. I think it was like a one to 49 or something like that. What was it one to one to 43? So I held the buy to the left. Uh, what do you mean? This one here? I took the buy and then I just, yeah, I took partials and everything like that. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going to let it hit break even. I'm just, I, I used it as a hedge. So yeah, yeah, no, now, now what I'm, I'm more concerned with is the sell. All right. I want, if we, if we just look at what's going on, right. If we just look at what's going on, we're, we're selling. I mean, it, it done, it done take a rocket science to, 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 to see that this thing is coming down. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the price action. We just got to catch the sell on it now. Right. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, bu 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 bu. yeah. So I'm looking for continuation cells. And of course, just keep in mind, right? Like we make a new low, which I'm expecting. We make a new low. Uh, this, this distribution is what controlling it specifically that one right there, right? That one right there on all three. So, you know, we may, we may see a little bit of a reprieve if, if price does break this low, we may see a little bit of a, of a buy. Cause you're not going to get, I mean, as much as you know, as much as we can see technically, the the likelihood of us just having multiple days in the red on U30, you know, sellers are going to start to take profits, right? And of course, when we look at from a higher time frame perspective, like where are we looking for price to really give us our, our next bounce? It's going to be in here, right? This is the next bounce. So I want to I want to see us get down to like the thirty one thousand range, right? That's where I want to see us get to. And, you know, overall, you know, I've been saying, I've been saying since like the end of last year that we're, we're going to see a 27,000 Dow, right? I mean, this, this thing is coming. I mean, this, it just makes sense because this is, this is the manipulation that gave us that, that leg when we broke. So we should potentially see that, that 27 K, you know, that 28 K, you know, I haven't even looked at the 80% of this, but where's the 80% line? Hold on. You know, twenty six six forty four. I mean, that's that's what I'm kind of like looking at. So ultimately, that's 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 my play. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to continue these shorts on indices. Uh, looking to short EU and GU if it gives it to me. Continue uh, dollar buys um, and AJ NJ buys. That's that's kind of where I'm going. And EG, you know, your GBP. I'll take the sell. Right. Um, we'll uh, we'll see how it plays out. Anybody else got anything else they're looking at? Um, what does Dow selling to our, do to our livelihoods? Uh, what do you mean to our livelihoods? To my livelihood? Um, uh, my, my broker is going to get a little upset having to pay me out, but I mean, that's, that's the extent of, of my livelihood effect to it. GJ. So yeah, we'll talk about GJ. Um, I'll tell you like GJ is not GJ is on the secondary list for me. Right. And there's a reason. So when we come over here to secondary list, let, let's just let's just look bigger picture, right? And if we if we think about this from a big picture, um, so what do we know, right? We know that we are that we are maintaining structure from here, right? We know that. So from a higher time frame, where am I a buyer from? I'm, I'm a buyer from here, or I'm a buyer from you know that eighty percent. That's that's where I'm a buyer from. Is that bad for the economy? Um, well, I, I'll pose this for you: the the Dow, the indices were bullish, or and still technically are bullish, but they they were having all time highs up until maybe the the end of the year, right through December. They were making all time highs, and I think our economy was was in a downward spiral. So. Do do they do indices selling off have any effect on our on on like my personal economy when it comes to the the view that I see the U.S. economy in now? It, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, 
you know, it's it's if you think of if you think of indices as now, does it have a detrimental effect to the average American who is invested with an IRA or a 401k through their business or something like that? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They're they're going to get ready to get hurt. You know, I mean, they're they're now, you know, in a in reality, is it is it going to do much? No, it's not. It's it's short term. Right. It's short term, just like. You know, people thought the end of the world was coming when the, you know, when the indices sold off because of Co- uh, because of uh, Davik, right? Or we'll say it backwards. Um, and, um, you know, what happened? You know, like you just held your money and, you know, you're actually in a way better position now than you were before, right? So I, I don't think it's going to have a lasting effect. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you got to, man. Yeah, no, it is. It's a it is. It's a, it's a correction. Markets need correction. So on GJ, right? On GJ, higher time frame. I know where I'm a buyer from. And when I start to look, hold on. When I start to look at what GJ's doing, I mean, this awfully looks like a freaking distribution, right? That looks like a decent distribution after making a high, and now potentially we can get a pullback into some more discounted pricing. So I've got that in the back of my head on GJ. Now, where am I a buyer from a lower time frame? So when we look at GJ, when we look at GJ, hold on. Okay, so uh, this is not a BOS. That's actually a boof. So, okay. So when we look at GJ, we know that we are because of this break up here, right? Because of this break up here, we know that we are in this leg right here. We are in that leg right there. And ultimately, we know that this is the SC of that leg. Well, price came into the SC, right? And gave us clear indication that buyers were in this market, right? We, we see a lot of accumulations and, and reaccumulations that are coming out of it. But the problem is we just didn't do anything after that. So this entire leg for me, this entire ah come on this entire leg right here is absolutely useless for me right um can i look for buys out of here i can look for buys sure um what do i think is going to happen i think with the pound being extremely bearish and with the yen right being extremely bearish I think we're potentially getting set up for just a lot of sideways action. Now, if the yen was bullish, I would be looking, you know, obviously I'd be expecting this to just collapse on us and look for the distribution sell down. Um, but the I think the driving force be, be behind GJ is going to be the pound. And if you, if you look at GU, right, GU is massively bearish, so... You know, I'm going to just let, let this thing play its hand and I'll wait to see, do we break a low or do we break a high? All right. I'm personally not going to be trying to do anything with this. And I mean, yeah, I mean, there's an accumulation in here, but just we're we're just selling off. You know, we're just ultimately just selling this thing down, 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 down. So I'm not going to try to to try to fight this. Um, so that's that's my that's my outlook on G, GJ. You know, um, we're still we're still bullish, right? We're still bullish lower time frame. We're still bullish intraday, um, but we've been within. We haven't made a new market cycle since October twentieth, right? October was our last market cycle on GJ. So, you know, at this at this point, it's just going to sit on my secondary list because we are we are about. 350 pips from breaking the structure point so that I can look for cells and we are about 600 pips from breaking this high to where I can say okay I'm now going to play out of here right because now we have now we have a bullish order flow right if that makes sense so because at this point we have from the lowest time frame, right? We have broken order flow, right? Because of this high, we are now on a bearish order flow lower time frame within our bullish leg that's sitting here. So GJ for me is just sitting on the sideline. That's why. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much what I got. Um, anybody got anything else? 
Um, yeah, let's see. BTC, man, BTC never hit my 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 spot. You know, I was looking forty six k. So I'm still I'm still going with the mindset that we're gonna get one more push down. I'm still going with the mindset that we're gonna get one more push down. So forty six k was what I needed us to break. You know, so you know we had the accumulation. We had the accumulation. Come on, there we go. We had the accumulation, the reaccumulation, the distro that took this high. We came back into 80% of it and we just, you know, we, we should have, we should have broken this 46 K mark and we just haven't. So I think, honestly, I think we're going to get one more push down. I think, I think you're going to, we're going to see us come back into here. So I'm personally, uh, from, from big market cap coins, I'm, I'm really not, uh, investing any more equity into them until Bitcoin really gives us the, the move because we can go a little bit lower. Yeah. Um, are you using MacBook with an Intel chip? No. Oh, wait, wait. I, I'm using a Mac mini with an Intel chip. Why? Yeah. Uh, breakdown would mean break of demand. The lot. Yeah. 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 If we, if we, if we break 28,944, get the M one chip. How come? I really don't need the M1 chip. I mean, I've got a, I've got a graphics card on this, on this Intel one. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, I'm not a. I've got three MacBooks. Maybe the next time I break a MacBook, but I'll, I'll be honest. Like the the M1 chip really doesn't doesn't give me much compared to my my gaming computer. Yeah, yeah. Next next time I break a a, a a MacBook or something, yeah. Well, you know, I'm actually I was looking at the M1 uh, Mac Mini, but I'm just I don't like the fact that you're limited on the RAM. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, my the computer over to my right here is that that thing's that thing's a beast. I've got the I've got a Ryzen nine. What is it? A Ryzen nine with a 3080 Ti GPU on it. So that thing, and I think it's, it's got four slots of RAM, but I'm only, I'm only using two. So it's got 32 gigs of RAM on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, Kevin, I know you're not a fan of the M1. I, listen, I, I like my, normally I'll tell you this. If you guys saw what I have open right now, I have, so I'm, I'm streaming on zoom. I'm streaming on Streamlabs through YouTube. I've got Google Chrome open. I've got, um, let's see, I've, I'm, I'm compressing my, through iMovie, I'm doing a compression on one of the videos that I edited. Um, I've got my mail open. I've got, I've got Discord open. I've got Telegram open and I've got my calendar open. So it's, it's hanging on there and I'm only at 61 gigs of CPU space and, or 61%. And I'm like 50% of my RAM. So she's doing all right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's SSD on my Mac mini. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a, it's got a one terabyte SSD. So you're working on getting Yeah, bro. Absolutely, man. Yeah. I've got, yeah. I mean, where's, where's my, where's my little, uh, I've got a, uh, I've got a two terabyte SSD, uh, M2 SSD on my, uh, my gaming one, but, uh, yeah, yeah, no, she's doing good. Those, uh, some on the crypto side, you know, obviously, like if you guys watch the node video I did on vapor nodes, you guys are, it, and if you guys are in on it, you're, you're pretty happy. So, um, <laughs> vapor nodes, I posted on my Twitter tonight. Um, what, what, what does she do? Hold on. She did, I don't know if you guys got in when I did, but vapor nodes is, uh, <laughs> yeah, Sean, I know you're happy, bro. <laughs> For that thing's up, like I, I want to say, what what was it up like eighty percent now? Hold on, let me let me look it up. It is, uh, it is. She's she's doing she's doing mighty nice. That's that's all I'm gonna say. She is doing mighty nice. Um, where's she at? There she there she is right there. Yeah. Oh, I I correct myself. She's up two hundred percent. 200%. So really nice and, and paying out 1% a day. So you can't go wrong. So I'm, I'm, I'll tell you what, I, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be disappointed if she, if she breaks, what is this? The January 21st high. 
I won't be disappointed if she breaks 14 cents at 400% on it. So, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is this is a nice one. VPND was was a really good vapor was a really good play on it. Um, I'm still waiting on lava nodes. I'm still waiting to see what uh, you know when they're going to come out when they're the the pre sale and all that stuff. So lava is the next one. Um, yeah, I know I've I've got a bunch of things in the works. So we'll see how it plays out. You know, and then you know, good old GPU mining is still doing it, man. You know, I'm still making a, a pretty good. Like I said, I've I've got a, I'm going to do a video on. Uh, on my setup when I, when I get it for my, um, my grow 10, cause I, I've got to exhaust this heat. So, but, uh, yeah, this is, this is the gaming one that I got right here. Where's she at? Uh, my winter soldier. There she is. So yeah, it's a 570 Oris, uh, elite for my motherboard. It's got the Ryzen 9, 12 core. Um, I've got the, this is actually, I uh, no, no, this is just a SSD one terabyte but then i've got the two terabyte msi um man i do got that's my little backup thing it's just got a couple gigs on it but yeah this is what i'm using with the 3080 so she gets it man she gets it uh would i ever do a gpu giveaway <laughs> man i fight for those things bro i fight for those things i'll tell you there's um right now is the time if you're gonna if you're if you want to get a in the used market now is the time to get it because i'm finding i just bought I just bought these 580s, so I just bought these 580s um, that I'm I'm actually mining uh, Ravencoin with, and um, I paid, dude, I paid for one of these. I only paid like fifty dollars for on eBay. I was the only one that bid it, and so I I got it for fifty, and the other two I ended up picking up. I think for just over a hundred dollars with shipping. So I've got, and I'm, I'm going to try and build this out. And, you know, I've got, I've got room for three more on that, on that motherboard. So I'm going to keep doing it. Um, uh, the ROI on Ravencoin GPU. So, um, so Ravencoin's not actually tremendously profitable right now. Um, just because of the happening and stuff, but long-term, you know, I, I like what it's doing. So like, what am I making right now on those on my five eighties? I think I'm making like maybe like $2 a day. Hold on. After power. Let's see. So the 580s, here's the 580s. And this is the this is just a 3-day average, right? So what the last 3 days has really given. So I'm at So on Ethereum, right? I'd be I'd be making 248 after power, 342 in in coins. But you can see a Raven coin. So I'm making $2.16 and after my power, which the power one is is not that big of a difference for me because I'm on solar, right? So I have a solar power. So it just means that I won't be having a surplus. But I'm making I'm making you know two dollars a day on Ravencoin. I mean, there's definitely some better options like Firo, but Firo uses a lot more power. Um, and I just I wanted I wanted something that I can you know I'm making. I mean, you can see right here I'm making forty Ravencoin a day is what I'm making on those three rigs. So I'm pretty good with that. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean it it is. It is. Uh yeah, I bought a yeah, I bought one of the 580s I bought for I think it was like $52 on eBay. So, it's just you just got to look, you know. I mean, every day I'm on it, every day I'm on my using my bots every day. I'm, you know, it's you're they're out there. I mean, they're getting more and more in there. You know, you can you can go on Zotac, you can go on Ant online, you know. Um, I mean, there's, there's a ton of places, Best Buy, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to get the Best Buy drop or use the Best Buy hack, you know, the, the, the hack in the app where it'll tell you if there's a GPU going to be there the next day and you just make sure you're there at the open. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm at this point, I'm not going to be growing anymore. I'm like, I'm, I'm at 31 cards. I'm not going to put any more cards on until I get one, the heat issue taken care of because the summer's coming. And, um, and my, my goal is just to move this to, uh, my shed. I'm going to put a, a, taking down my old shed, putting up a larger shed that's going to be insulated and I'm just going to run everything through the shed. So, but I mean, you could see I'm, I'm mining 224 souls of flux. Um, I think I'm making something like, I think, I think it's something like $6 a day with flux, um, mining ergo, mining a ton of Ethereum, uh, Alephium, I'm at 3.1 giga hash of a th uh, I'm doing X Monero, I'm doing Ton, 
uh, CFX, which is Conflux, and then Ravencoin, and then Reptorium on my mining rig. So, I mean, I'm mining a ton of coins. It's, uh, you know, I'm kind of going with the, I know, I know Ergo, I know Ergo is going to make a run, right? I like the project. I know Ergo is going to make a run. I know obviously Ethereum's doing its thing. Uh, Flux is the big one. You know, I make a ton of Flux. And, and for those of you that haven't watched it, watch that, the Flux node. Um, I actually have my Raspberry Pi right here in front of me. I was just, I was just putting the server packet on it and, um, yeah, the, the 12th. So in four days we're going to do the, ha it's going to be the halvening uh for the uh for the buy-ins so you know if if you're if you don't want to run the the hardware you can do a vps um but i think that's going to be the biggest uh that's going to be probably the biggest thing of of this quarter is getting in on this because i'll tell you right now mark my words right mark my words within the next five years you're going to see flux overtake ethereum in market cap um, this, this by far, this is probably the biggest project with the most, um, promise that I have ever seen in the crypto space. So right now the buy-in is 10,000 flux, right? It's a stake and they're moving it to 1000 flux. And even if you don't have the 1000 flux, say you're, you're waiting or whatever, you know, towards the end of the year, they're going to have a share where you're going to be in a pool where you can do 250 flux or five flux. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm personally, I'm going to, I'm running a, I'm running a cumulus right now. I'm going to, um, take my stake, my 10,000 flux that I had staked with the flux I've been mining. I'm going to make a Nimbus node and two cumulus nodes. So, and then you can see you're making 12 and a half percent off of the block rewards and you're making seven and a half percent off the block rewards. So, yeah, um, Yeah, I mean the graphics card. It's just you got to look at the VRAM and everything like that. My, uh, what's what is a budget, man? You know, I'll, I'll be honest. Like, it 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 really it depends on what you can get the graphics cards for. You know, um, I'll, I'll tell you this: like, you can get you can get a motherboard, right? You can get a motherboard for a hundred to one hundred and twenty-five dollars US, right? You can get a CPU to run for fifty to seventy dollars US. Your SSD or your USB is going to cost you like twenty dollars, and that's 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 the, the the basics. And then you just need the GPUs. I mean, that's it. So, you know, like I said, I mean this this rig right here, it, it's just it's it's got to be like what you're looking for, right? So, like this rig right here, was it? Um, you know, if like if you're gonna get into it now and say you want to get a decent rig, I, I'd say get either 6600 XTs or 6600s, because you can get these for about 500 to 550 dollars each, right? Brand new. So you know, my motherboard, my motherboard here. Um, I mean, I got it on Newegg Shuffle. So, but um, you know, you're you're gonna pay about 100 to 125 dollars for the motherboard. You're going to pay for this i3. I ended up paying, I think, like $75 for. For this USB 3.0 64 gig. Actually, it's a 64 gigabyte. Wow. Um, I think I paid like $12 for that. All right. So, I mean, you're you're talking just just in this stuff right here, you're going to need about 200 bucks, And then your GPUs, right? So, you know, you can get, you can get RX 6600s for anywhere between 415 and 430 right which are going to do about you know like two three mega hash less than this so but from a power consumption i mean this thing doesn't use a lot of power right um and i'm making i mean what am i making so i'm making I'll tell you right now what I'm making on them. Ooh, do, do, do. All right, man. Have a good one. Have a good one, bro. You got it. Um, let me see. I'm making on my on my 6600 XTs. Uh, so I'm only. Oh, actually, I take it back. Hold on. I'm. I am doing. So I'm actually dual mining. So hold on. 
So I am doing, what am I doing? I'm doing, so I'm doing 200 mega hash and I'm doing uh, three point, no, no, I'm doing uh, 3.2 giga hash. No, no, not 3.2, 1.3 giga hash. So I don't care about the power. So I'm doing combined, what am I making? I am making per month, well, per day, right? Per day, I am making $7.79 on that rig. And I'm making $233.70 on that rig, right? So it doesn't, I mean, it's it's a low, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm pushing 200 mega hash on it. But if I go over to my bigger 3000 series cards, right? That 300 mega hash on Ethereum, you know, I'm doing, geez, I'm doing a whole lot more than that. What am I at? I'm at, let's see if it catches up. Yeah. I mean, you can see like just in these cards alone, I mean, I'm pulling, I'm pulling 50. Oh, why is this? Oh, okay. Okay. I got it because I haven't updated this one yet. That's why. So yeah, it's, for you know i i would say that start with one one gpu and then move on you know like that's how i started i started i got i got my motherboard i got my cpu you don't need anything crazy right and then i got my you know my ssd drive those are cheap and then start with one gpu you know this was my very first gpu i started with this 3070 ti evga right I paid 900 bucks for it and then you just start adding them in you know you just start finding them you add them in add them in add them in and before you know it, you, you're sitting on 10 cards, you're sitting on 15 cards, you know, um, I clear, I'll tell you right now, like I clear on my entire mining rig, um, I clear anywhere between, depending on what crypto is doing, right. The price of crypto, but you know, it's anywhere between 2,500 and like 3,500 bucks. So, you know, and obviously we're at, we're at a down market. So, you know, I'm, Ethereum, Ethereum gets back up to 4k, you know, I've just doubled what my, my, my monthly earnings are, you know? So, um, after you pay for a challenge, do your 30 day start? Uh, no, no. After you take the first trade, it, well, it depends on, it depends on your, on your prop firm. Right. Um, I can tell you like TPT, yeah. TPT and FTMO, it'll start, uh, when you take your first trade. So yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, awesome. Awesome. And let's see. Um, all right, cool. Um, anybody got anything else? If not, I'm going to call it a night and, um, I'll upload this video as soon as it's done. So, um, but yeah, you know, I would definitely, uh, keep an eye out. I'll, I'll be dropping the lava nodes. Uh, video as soon as I get some more information on when it's going to be coming out and, uh, and go from there, you know, we'll see what, uh, we'll see what it does. Uh, yeah, cool, cool. All right, cool guys. Listen, thanks for hopping on. I will catch everybody later and, uh, yeah, have a great one.